Hey guys, it is April the 29th, 2024. And if my voice sounds a little raspy right now, it's just I, I uh, got up this morning and started cutting my grass. I have a rod and lawnmower that, and uh, I got on it and cut the grass today. And <clears throat> I've got dust and all kinds of stuff in my lungs right now. And um, I just sound bad, but I'm, I'm okay. It's just, it's just the dust from cutting the grass. And I guess the the pollen from everything, the ragweed or whatever, from me cutting the grass. <clears throat> we have more weeds than we do grass in our yard, and I'm sure that stuff, I inhaled all that when I was cutting it. But, um, sorry if I haven't gotten to yesterday's com uh, yesterday's comments. Um, I got up this morning and just had to jump in, in there and finish this up uh, before it got really hot today. I figured I would, uh, get that done, make today's video, and then reply to the comments. So I'm sure I'll probably reply to the comments by the time you're watching this, but um, uh, I just had some stuff I had to do. It's, it's starting to get really warm around here right now, and I just wanted to get that knocked out. But <clears throat> anyway, today I, I just want to talk, basically, and I guess where I want to start is, is uh, You know, just talking about life and how challenging life can be sometimes. You know, life throws a lot of stuff at us. And um, you know, sometimes it can feel like every corner we turn, just another problem comes, uh, you know, and hits us. And, uh, you know, there's just so many negative things bad things in this world too you know every time you turn the news on it's just something always bad um you know it's this country wants to wants to go to war with us or that country wants to go to war with us or this terrorist group wants to do something to us or this is happening in iran or this is happening in israel and you know all that stuff's scary and <clears throat> You know, we can often get caught in this loop of negativity and, you know, then we're looking at that and then, you know, this, our car blew up this morning and our septic tank backed up and, uh, you know, we found out that we, uh, you know, you find out you have some health problem or whatever it is. And, you know, my point is life's full of problems and they're never going to stop coming. Problems have been around since the beginning of time, since we've been here. I mean, there's always going to be a problem. I mean, heck, there's problems for anything. You know, take a look at anything out there in nature. You know, any little bug that's crawling around. There's another bug that wants to get it. And, you know, it's like the goats in our backyard. There's coyotes that are prowling around our property all the time, ready to get them. But the goats don't worry about that. They just keep going on about their business and doing their thing. There's chicken hawks flying all over the place. I just saw one just a minute ago. It was flying solo. <clears throat> and you can really see because when they come in, their shadow gets really, really big. I was cutting the grass, and next thing you know, one came flying down. My wife had left the chickens out today, and they're out running around the yard. I wouldn't doubt it if one of them's missing now. Um, they will. They'll just swoop right in and pick. I've watched it happen, and they will grab those chickens and take off with them, and that's it. You don't see them again. They they take grab that. They'll fly down, grab that chicken, and they fly right back up into the air. But my point is, is that for anything, there's problems, and it's not just a human problem. <laughs> we have problems, uh, but alcohol is not the the route to solving them. I know that it seems like that's the way to go, and it's the easiest way to go. Trust me, I know. Because alcohol does. It takes our problems away for the moment. But they never really go away. They're still there, and if anything, they just start to pile up and get worse. But I can tell you that alcohol is, or drugs, it's just not, it's just not the way to go. Um, because if we slip up and take that one drink or that one pill or that one <clears throat> shot or whatever it is, uh, there's no stopping. 
you know, fooling yourself into thinking that you can just have one shot or one beer or one glass of wine, whatever it is, that is your subconscious, the addicted subconscious telling you that it's okay and it's not okay. If you didn't have a problem, you never would have stopped or you wouldn't be thinking about stopping or you wouldn't be watching this channel right now or somebody in your life has a problem. Um, because it affects us all. And I know, I know how easy it would be just to have that drink. It's right there. It's not far. Not far at all. But that wouldn't... That wouldn't solve anything. The problem's still gonna be there, and now you created another one. You get stuck in that perpetual loop, and you can't get out. It's almost impossible to get back out of it again. And for any of you guys who have, you know, fallen off the wagon and gotten back on, you know how tough it is. It's not easy. <clears throat> so easy to fool ourselves into thinking that we're just going to do it for a week. Or I'm going to do it for two or three days. <clears throat> or I'm, a, I'm just going to drink on the weekend. This time I've got it under control. But, you know, I, just, 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 just this weekend. That's all I'm going to do. I'm sorry, I was getting bit by a horse fly. <laughs> but uh, it never works out like that. You know, as soon as we have that one drink, we're right back. Or we take that pill, or we shoot that heroin up, or whatever it is that we do. Uh, it's right back to square one all over again. And the problem is, is that's very dangerous, because when we do that, you know, if we've quit for some period of time, our tolerance has dropped. And in our mind, we're not thinking about that. You know, the, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go right back to the same amount that we were drinking before, and that, that causes a lot of problems. And spells trouble um, because like I said our tolerance levels have dropped especially if you've got a, a, you know a significant time under your belt uh, your tolerance has dropped majorly and um, you know now here you are uh, you know you drank that one beer now what if you were a liquor drinker you think that's all you're gonna do is just drink beer heck no yeah maybe for today because your tolerance is at the point where, you know, two, three beers might make you feel really good. Is it going to be that good tomorrow? Nope. You know, those two, three beers is going to turn into six. And the next day it's going to turn into 12. And then the next day you're going to go, I can't, I'm tired of drinking this beer. It's making me full. So I'm going to go back to the real stuff. You know, I can get a pint. That's all I'm going to drink is one pint. Just a pint. Or a half a pint. Or whatever it is. And that's it. I'm going to drink this one pint, and that's it. Now I'm going to stop again. I used to tell myself that every single day. I used to make the stupid mistake of thinking that I'm going to go to the liquor store, and I'm going to buy one pint, and that's all I'm going to drink. Man, 30 minutes later, I was right back in my car, driving back to the liquor store again, because that one pint wasn't enough. Who was I fooling? That wasn't going to work for me. One pint's not enough for me. You know, I just got, you know, that's just uh an appetizer for me and I know good and well that if I was to leave here right now and go to the store with the all intentions of you know just drinking a six-pack of whatever light beer there is because that's all you know I'm not gonna drink the heavy stuff just the light beer you know I've, I, I owe it to myself you know I think we a lot of times I would do that to myself as well you know I would do I would make these uh, agreements with myself um, you know, I, if, if I get this yard work done today, I deserve a 12-pack. Or if I get that fence built today, I deserve a 12-pack. Or if I get that run-in shed finished, I deserve a bottle of liquor. Or if I get these plants done, man, I deserve a bottle of liquor. Or whatever it is. I was always setting up these, these agreements with myself. I was always talking to myself and talking myself into doing it again. And, and making these these deals with me, within myself, just this one time, just today. I promised myself tomorrow I won't drink. Tomorrow never came. And tomorrow never came until I got extremely ill. 
and almost lost my life. And it wasn't until then that I finally woke up and said, I can't keep cutting these deals with myself because I'll never fall through. And I think that's what I'm probably going to end up titling today's video is just never falling through with the deal because we never do. We never follow through with that deal. I know a bunch of you out there, I know you've made those deals with yourself. Look how many times it didn't work out. Do you think it's going to work out this one time? It won't. It will never work out. It just doesn't. We're not set up that way. And if, if that was the case, we wouldn't be cutting deals with ourselves anyway. If we were normal drinkers, if we could have a, one drink, we wouldn't have to cut a deal with ourselves. We wouldn't have to say, if I do X, Y, Z, I can have this drink. It just doesn't work that way. But normal people have a drink and they go on about their day. They don't worry about it. Most people have a, you know, normal people that have a drink, they have that drink, they get tired, they're done. That's not the way that we work. We have that drink, it activates something in our brain. We go, you know, right off the deep end. And I know that's me. I can't think back to one time that I ever just sat back and just had a couple beers. I can't. I, I just, I, I swear to you, I cannot think of a time that I just sat back. Other than when I first started drinking. That's the only time. Sorry, guys. These, <laughs> these horse flies are eating me up today for some reason. But, um, <clears throat> my point is, is that... <laughs> You know, how many times have you tried cutting those deals with yourself and they, ne they, never, they never worked out? And if we, you know, if we were normal drinkers, we wouldn't have to cut deals. You know, normal, normal people don't do that. You know, if they want to have a glass of wine, they just have one. You know, it's funny when you go to somebody's house that's not an alcoholic and you look in their fridge and you might see a bottle of wine there. You come back two weeks later, that same bottle of wine might still be there and it just blows you away. And I know somebody, for instance, they've got this huge liquor stash at their house. They've got like a big bar set up. Every time I go over there, I just look at it. And I'm thinking to myself, if that was there, if that was in my house, that'd be gone. I, it would have been gone in a week. There's no way I could have that around me, that temptation. Because it would just, it would be too much. I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be able to hold myself back. I know that little guy on my shoulder would just be sitting there, just waiting, whispering to me. It's okay, you can do it. Just this one time. Nobody's gonna know. Yeah, maybe nobody's gonna know. I'm gonna know. That guy's constantly talking to me, telling me it'll be okay. Nobody's gonna know. You're not alone if you have that little, that little whisper in your ear. That's telling you it's going to be okay. Just stop by this door. No one's going to find out. They are going to find out. Because that one drink is going to lead to a hundred. And they're going to come home. or Somebody's going to see you. Or somebody's going to call you. You're going to be slurring your words. You're going to think you sound fine. They're going to know. <laughs> I think back to when I was a drinker. And all the phone calls that I would make. And. I thought that I sounded like I was sober. And now I think back and I'm like, man, I know I was slurring. I sounded ridiculous. Those people must have been like, oh my gosh, here he goes calling again. He's wasted. And I would. And I would, you know, would just go on and on and on. People ask me, have you been drinking? Oh, no, 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 no. No, not a bit. I haven't drank today. Who was I kidding? The only person I was kidding was myself. Everybody knew. I don't know. At the end of the day, guys, the struggle's real, and it's here. And every single day, we have a decision to make. You know, what do you want to? What decision do you want to make? You know, there's only a couple of places you're going to end up if you go back to drinking, and that's either dead or in jail, or extremely ill or in the hospital or something like that. I mean, it's just there's not very good outcomes that come from this. For normal people, yeah, they can have that drink. They'll be fine. But for us, no, we don't drink that way. We don't have one. And it always ends up being this, you know, really bad thing. And we always take it way too far every single time. I just know that we just can't have one. My point for today is don't, don't, don't let that little 
person that's whispering in your ear on your shoulder, don't let don't listen to that. Because it's not going to turn out okay. Everybody's going to find out. And it's not going to be a secret. You owe it to yourself to stay sober. I know. I know that, you know, some days can be boring. And that, that warm blanket that comes over you, you know, that's a good feeling. I know. Trust me. If anybody knows how good that stuff feels, I, I'm the first one to tell you. I've talked about this over and over again with people. There's never been anything that's ever made me feel like that. Nothing. I've never experienced anything like that. And I've tried a lot of different stuff. And there's not, nothing has ever felt that way for me. And it just That's just the way my body works. That's the thing that makes me tick. I was watching this movie last night <clears throat> before I fell asleep and uh, there were these guys, they were in a bar and this girl had walked in and they were intoxicated. It was all fake, but <clears throat> these guys were drunk and they were hitting on this young lady and they had her kind of cornered by the bathroom. She walked out and I was thinking to myself, you know, that's how I used to be. I used to be that guy. Although I wasn't cornering girls into the, you know, in the bathroom or anything like that. But I was, I, the way they were acting, I, I used to act like that. Just like an idiot. Uh, and I thought I was so cool. And I think back on all the times I would be out at bars and stuff like that. Just saying the most ridiculous stuff to people. And how cool I thought I was when I just looked like the biggest idiot. I did not look cool at all. It's embarrassing to think back on, but I do it often because I want to know. I want to think about it. I want to sit in that and remember <clears throat> why I don't drink anymore. Because it's important for me to remember that. Sometimes I'll go through my phone and look at old pictures and stuff like that from when I used to be a drinker. And look at my face, how sad I used to look. How red my face used to be and bloated it was. How fat that I was during that period of time. How unhealthy I felt. <clears throat> I could see it in my eyes in my pictures. Just going back and looking at that. It's sad. That guy was sad. I was so sad. I really did dream about being sober one day. It was it, all I ever dreamed about. Like I said, I left my last job thinking that was going to be the cure for everything. I was going to leave my job and I was going to get sober. And everything was going to be okay. I used to tell people, I'm going to be a long-haired hippie at my house. That didn't happen. If anything, I quit my job. All my problems got worse. And my alcohol addiction just spiraled out of control. And I was always... Uh, I was always home. It just gave me more opportunity to drink. I was my own boss. It gave me more opportunity to drink. I didn't have anybody to tell me anything. You know, if I woke up in the morning and wanted to have six vodkas in the morning and decide not to go do a job, that was my business. That's what I did. There were often times I would have a big job that I had to go do, and I would just call and be like, I can't make it today. And I would just stay home and drink all day. And that's just not a good thing to do. And that's why I'm why I am where I am right now because you know I decided to drink my health away and uh, that's just not a good thing but anyway guys I think the point to today's video is just remember why you're here remember why you've gotten sober or if you're thinking about getting sober remember why you want to be sober if you sit down and write a list of all the reasons that you would like to be sober or all the reasons that you would like to stay sober or whatever and then write down a list of all the reasons that you want to drink or why you drink or whatever I guarantee you the list on the side of not drinking is going to be a thousand times longer than the reasons to drink because alcohol creates a lot of problems a lot of problems I can honestly say that every single problem that I've ever had in my life almost has been because of alcohol. Anything I've ever done that was stupid, uh, anytime I've ever gotten in an argument with somebody, I was intoxicated. Anytime I ever did anything that was beyond my moral compass was because I was intoxicated. I never made good decisions when I drank. And I can just tell you that um, 
I don't want to go back to it just for those reasons. I don't want to have to wake up in the morning and have that fear rush over me of some little remembrance of the night before, that little second that I have of me doing something ridiculous like dancing up on the bar or something like that because I used to do stuff like that. I'm not joking. I'm being dead serious. I was an embarrassment to myself and to my family for a very long time. I remember this one time I went up to my uncle's house. Uh, we had a family reunion. My family are from Virginia. We went up there for a family reunion and <clears throat> I ended up getting so intoxicated that, one, I don't remember hardly anything from that day. And it was supposed to be a family reunion. I hadn't seen these people in years and haven't seen them since. And they probably don't want to see me again because of my actions from that day. But we had we were hanging out at my uncle's house. He owns a bunch of land up in the mountains in Virginia. and. Um, we were barbecuing, and we had, I, uh, I think we were cooking a whole hog. I, I don't really re even remember. I remember as soon as we got there, uh, we met up with my uncle. He was up on the top of the mountain, and we were barbecuing up there. And we had ridden the four-wheeler up to the top. And, um, you know, we uh, started drinking the hard stuff pretty quickly. And I remember, you know, somewhere around halfway through the day or whatever, we were on our we were on our way back down to the house because we had finished cooking or whatever. I, like I said, I don't really remember, but I do know that I was on the back of the four-wheeler and I was so intoxicated I could barely even hold on. I was hanging off the back of it, and I know that it embarrassed my wife something that she'll never let me forget about. And <clears throat> I continued to, to act like a fool the whole entire time we were there. I got into a wrestling match with my uncle and ended up getting hurt really bad. He pushed me and and, and he he should have I, I think I was trying to wrestle with him and he wanted me to get off of him and he pushed me and I fell down a flight of stairs that went down to the basement and I ended up getting hurt really bad and I was supposed to drive home the next day uh, from Virginia that that we were supposed to we had been there for a few days but I was supposed to drive back the next day I was so hungover I couldn't do it and I had to make my wife drive all the way back from Virginia she was not happy with me my point is is that another one of this the stupidest things that i did i ruined a family reunion because i got so intoxicated and um you know my family's never going to forget that they never will i'm sure they'll remember that day for the rest of their lives and i was a good kid too you know i was that kid that when i came around my family you know when i was younger you know everybody was happy to see me and it's not the case now uh, if anything, I've spoken to my family a long time. They probably don't want anything to do with me, and that's just what it is. But I created that problem because of my alcohol. And the point is, is that don't listen to that little guy on your shoulder who's telling you that everything's going to be okay, because it's not. Because we never follow through with our promises. It never works out. One leads to a hundred. Don't fool yourself into thinking that you're just gonna drink two days, or you're just gonna drink this week, or you're just gonna drink this weekend, or you're just gonna drink tonight, because you will go back to drinking full time. If not worse than you were before, you'll be right back at the same place all over again. It's just not worth it. So, <clears throat> anyway guys, that's what I wanna talk about today, is we never follow up on our promises with ourselves and don't give in and don't think that you you're going to be able to follow up on it because you won't um it just doesn't work that way i've known way too many people and not just alcoholics drug addicts everything you know they they've you know given themselves a pass one time you know after long periods of sobriety and gone right back to the place they were or worse and uh i've seen it happen too many times and um just don't want anybody out there to think that they're going to be able to follow up on their own promise because I promise you you won't. But anyway, guys, that's it. Just don't think that, you know, you can have those one or two. If you watch any person on YouTube who talks about this subject, they'll, they'll say the same exact thing I'm saying right now. Everybody out there says the same thing, that they just can't have just one. And they can't go back to being a normal drinker. 
or they can't go back to being a normal person who takes drugs or whatever it is. They, you know, some people experiment. They can have, they could try it one time, but that's not us. And don't think for an instant that you know you're going to substitute something else in place of alcohol, and that's going to be the cure all for it all. Because guess what? If you do that, you're going to fall right back into another. You're going to spiral out of control with whatever that is. Um, just don't do it. Just stay away. There's nothing wrong with being sober. It's completely fine. Most people out there are. <laughs> just we have this idea that we always have to be intoxicated to be comfortable in this world. And I get it. I know where, you, where you're coming from. I often don't feel comfortable either. But I just fight through it. There's a lot of times I don't feel comfortable in my own skin. Trust me when I tell you. I don't. There's so many times I just want to have that feeling, you know, when I go out in public because I get anxiety just like anybody else does, being around groups of people or anything, you know. I, I, I want to feel chill and relaxed and not feel uncomfortable and have anxiety, but, you know, that's just my makeup and I just have to deal with it. And I got to be honest, you know, the more and more that I do it, the easier it gets. And, uh... Like I said, I, it's not like I don't think about it too, because I do. And that little guy is always whispering in my ear too. I just don't listen to him. So, with that said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get off of here for today. Um, I love you guys so much, and thank you for watching today's video. I'm sorry I didn't have like a solid subject here, but I just kind of wanted to talk today. And I uh, just wanted to talk about that, about not making promises to ourselves that we cannot keep because we never can follow up on our end. The alcohol can always fall through. It it always gives us its end of the promise. It it gets us drunk every time. We just can't keep our end of the deal. And uh, you know, just don't give in. So, guys, I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Love y'all so much. Bye bye.